Has life ever tested you just as you are about to savor your victories? Can any journey be truly fulfilling without tangible challenge? Today, I encourage you to reflect on the following insight. Success is not final and failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. In our last episode, we embarked on our much-anticipated voyage, our cross-country passage from Italy to Corfu. Our adventure had been building for months from the picturesque coasts of the Amalfi to the Aeolian archipelago's enchanting islands, we navigated the charming shores of Italy for six entire weeks. However, this day stood apart from all the others. We were thrust into an unprecedented ordeal. Without warning, gale force winds howling at an astonishing 50 knots descended upon us. With no autopilot, we lay adrift in the open ocean and our day took a sharp turn into the realm of survival. For over 10 hours, we continuously battled the elements, completely breaking down. My face was splash mountain in a minute ago. All the tears. And building ourselves back up again. I accepted that we're literally surfing in a boat. As we experience the scariest sail and day of our lives. If you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Your support helps us greatly and means the entire world to the Trinity crew. And for those returning viewers, we can't thank you enough for joining us once again. Today, we return to our regularly scheduled programming and begin our short voyage to the island of Corfu itself. We set sail early as another fun of dangerous weather continues to tail us. And while we gain a lot more resilience, perspective, and mileage, we lose quite a bit on the way too. Honestly, stranger things have happened. Worse things have happened. Will Trinity and her crew make it safely to call through in one piece? Join us as we traverse the aftermath of last minute moorings and the effects of persistently inconsistent weather patterns. Without further ado, let's dive right in and escape the ordinary together. Come to the conclusion that the boat's cursed. <laughs> you woke up after that really intense day yesterday that you all witnessed. Pulling up to leave this anchorage now in the morning. And what happens? Anchor chain's getting a bit stuck, you know, getting put in a bit reverse, you know, it's okay, it's okay. And then all of a sudden the chain starts coming up at a pretty fast speed, and I'm like, oh, fantastic, it's working. But it felt a bit light, and I was like, no, nah, surely not. Chain comes up. What? What's not there? The anchor! The anchor is gone. We have lost the anchor to the bottom of the sea. Honestly, stranger things have happened. Worse things have happened. We have a spare. We have a spare. Do we know how to attach it? <sighs> Let's go have a quick look before we leave. Oh. Yeah, are you ready? You ready to see? <laughs> Where is she? Because she's not there. <laughs> Somewhere in there. But you know, we're going to a harbour because we have some crazy wind today. We didn't actually get any footage because we were all just so, so, so tired after yesterday. But the winds were howling. The boat was the loudest wind I've ever heard. So I'm assuming she took a lot of stress last night. But yeah, she's gone. Rest in peace. Is this normal? I don't think this is normal. But it's our normal. I hope it makes for some great content. <laughs> There's a really strong weather front moving in very soon. So we've decided to leave our anchorage because it's not protected here at all, especially after 12. It's getting into orange and red zone winds. We've got a cat behind us and another monohull leaving too. We're all kind of leaving around the same time. So we're heading now to Corfu. Our original plans were to head to Palaiokastritsa, but it's it's on the kind of outer edge of the island. So it's completely unprotected from the west side. Thanks. So we're not heading there, it's very unsafe. I'm not taking any more chances. <laughs> so we're heading into the inner side of Corfu, into the east. Yeah, around yes. Corfu town. Around we're Corfu town. To, and we're going to have about two days of strong weather. So we're heading to a port just north of Corfu town, the main port called Bantrak Harbour. And I haven't made a reservation yet, but hopefully we can get in there because the weather over the next two days, the whole of Corfu is like pretty not wind. How do you feel, man? Did you just lose our anchor? The anchor lost itself. Big <laughs> Miss Gusty triggered the night I woke up about three times. Gusty, the boat was going yeah. round in circles very, very quick. Pin, there's a pin. Yeah. A shoe pin. I'm sure you'll see that. As long as you don't get caught, yeah. it means the pin will break. Over the chain. So, uh, the anchor's on the floor. So, I think when we buy a new anchor, I'll actually get a float for it as well. Yeah. yeah. Luckily, you have a spare. 
and luckily we have the opportunity to head somewhere now where we'll have safety. This was everybody's temporary safe haven after yesterday's things <laughs> with the weather. And we're going to make sure we're not heading anywhere towards the red fire bearing Are there fires that go through? Yes. Happy days. After the dramatic events of the previous day, we found a temporary sanctuary in the first anchorable spot we could locate. Although it provided a measure of safety compared to the open sea, it still remained relatively exposed. As an angry 30 knot weather front loomed on the horizon, we knew it was time to move on. Our destination? Corfu. A four hour voyage from our previous night's safe haven. Nestled in the Ionian Sea, Corfu, also known as Kakira, is a sailor's paradise. Its strategic location near Italy and the Greek mainland has made it a hub for sailors, welcoming them with warm winds and crystal clear waters. The town of Corfu boasts a captivating blend of Venetian, French and British architectural influences. Its old town, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, showcases elegant pastel coloured buildings with wrought iron balconies and narrow cobblestone streets. The island's lush landscape also adds to its appeal, with its ideal location, historical charm and a unique blend of architectural styles, Corfu remains a top destination for sailors and tourists alike, all looking to explore a place where the past marries breathtaking sea and landscapes. Still feeling the tremors of the previous day's ordeal, we were eager to properly embrace Greece after months of anticipation. Our excitement surged as we approached Corfu, eager to find a safe harbour and discover the unique charms of the town itself. Stay with us as we check in on the crew during this short journey to the mainland. Oh, back in Greece for one minute, my hay paper's already back. Seriously, <laughs> stay away from those bad boys. And it's so weird to be in another country without having taken a flight. Isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't feel like we are. We're just deliberating as to whether or not we need to check into with Greek customs. We are European citizens yeah, though, so... We're not allowed to passport to tell people not, because we've got our European one. Yeah, we've all got our Irish passports, so... Highly unlikely, but we will just double check of course you don't want to be breaking any rules. Yeah, I'm just gonna hit a marina for safety and we need to get all the salt off the road. Yeah, she's very salty after yesterday. Ooh, tiny wave. <laughs> Baby wave. So you can't really see over there, but it's the outline of Croatia and Albania. It goes for miles and miles and miles. That's on our port side. And the starboard side is Corfu! We also just heard this morning about the fires that are in Corfu that we hadn't heard of and we can kind of see them there in the distance. A bit happier to be going in somewhere that will give us some shelter for a night or two. It's kind of on the side where we were heading towards for Thursday and Friday and anyway. We really had wanted to go to Palio because Palio Strip is the place where Martin and I had our very first holiday. Um, when I was younger than Taylor, I was actually 19. So we'll get into the port for around maybe four-ish, but the guy had said we need to be in there before five. So they're obviously getting ready for the winds because it'll still have some effect, but they're a lot more protected because it's on the west side. On the east side. Oh, sorry, east side. Yeah, probably goes on the west side. It's going to get pummeled out. Oh, yeah. Anything on the west is going to get pummeled. We soon arrived at Mandraki Harbour and had to circle the entrance a few times as we awaited VHF correspondence from the marina. Navigating the shallow, rocky bay at Mandraki Harbour was no easy feat, with plenty of other boats vying for shelter from an incoming weather front too. A stroke of luck came when we secured a mooring spot that accommodated our keel's draft. However, as it often goes, reality didn't quite paint the smooth arrival picture we had in our mind's canvas. If you've been following our journey for a while, firstly, we appreciate you guys. Secondly, you'd be very familiar with the ongoing engine troubles we faced. After enduring the chaos of gale force winds for an entire 10 hours yesterday, then followed by another 4 hours en route to Corfu today, what transpired next wasn't entirely unexpected. For more details, let's hear from Sharon. Hi guys, um, it's not 
another saga. We've just tried to come in to our spot here in Corfu and it was just so windy. We entered the harbour, it was a stair into mooring, so we had to reverse into the spot. It was just so windy. <laughs> So, so windy. The wind got really, really strong and the engine started to really struggle. I was really fighting against it. And then smoke started to come out of the gearbox and then caught away into the spot. The engine just completely failed on us. It was really quite, quite stressful. It was quite a narrow berth. We were just about to smash into super yacht on the right hand side of us. A uh, Persian 6X motorboat. It's not that I know a lot about them, but there were a couple of million. Uh, luckily their crew were actually on board, so a couple of kind of you know, big men and they were literally like pushing Trinity away from, from their, their yacht. Uh, ah, yeah, it was kind of really crazy. It all happened so quickly. It's kind of very hard to recount kind of everything that happened. Luckily it wasn't a complete disaster. Ted was running around with one of the fenders and like, you know, keeping us away as much as she possibly could. The harbour master uh, was really calm. He got Martin to throw some lines so they secured Trinity as quickly as they could because we had no engine, nothing, no trusses, everything, nothing working. So really, really quite, quite stressful. But in the kind of crossfire of it, at one point our stern hit off the Persian's uh, anchor at the front and we lost our San Marino flag. Yeah, the one that took us a couple of months to get it. and literally that's all we're left with from it. Just kind of crazy. You know, the last few days have been so so stressful. Thankfully nobody was hurt. We can purchase another flag and another pole but yeah I think we're just going to take a couple of days off and Coop's the last couple of days have been really 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 stressful and we're just exhausted. We'll, uh, we'll catch up again with you all soon. Take care. So we finally reached Corfu. We may be an anchor lighter and a San Marino flag shorter, but we made it. Every adventure should have a little drama. I guess we're doing this thing right. <laughs> Join us next time as we finally indulge in the beauty of Corfu Town and allow ourselves some well-deserved mental and physical rest. We've earned it, and so have you guys. I think we've all witnessed enough stress these last few episodes to last us all a lifetime. Are you ready? We can't wait to escape the ordinary with you. See you there, guys. Bye.